Hey everyone, this is Josh from Predatory Plants. I thought it would be fun to make a video showcasing some of the most extreme pitchers in the Nepenthes genus. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Nepenthes in general and uh, a lot of these plants have incredible variety and morphology and I wanted to highlight a couple of them just in a quick video here. Um, the first one, as you can see, is a Nepenthes vogelii. This is a relatively recent discovery, uh, but has become more and more available on the market today. Its lower pitchers have this very extreme elongated shape, beautiful coloration, very nicely striped peristomes, uh, and so it's a very attractive plant. But what makes this one stand out the most are the upper pitchers. They are absolutely incredible and unlike anything else in the genus. They get this huge bulbous wine glass shape to them, uh, still amazing coloration, very extreme peristomes. You can look down into them. They have just beautiful stripes, coloration, all of that. Uh, it's a really uh, interesting texture as well, uh, kind of kind of like a, a bulb plant, uh, a little bit firm. Uh, very, very neat plant. Next, uh, down here, you see the very well-known Nepenthes hamata. This is probably one of the toothiest of all of the species. Uh, amazing in contrast to the Vocalii, how, how different this plant is. Right here we have just a beautiful long pitcher. Uh, the lower pitchers produce these deep black jagged teeth, dark coloration, hairs on top of the lid. Very easy to identify this plant. But again, as cool as these are, uh, the real show happens once they start making upper pitchers. And there is absolutely nothing like this. The pitchers are huge, they're long, and the teeth are, if it's possible, even more extreme. Now, they don't get the coloration of the lower pitchers, but just look at that. This, you know, nothing could be more unworldly than one of these looking down inside. Now, an unfortunate part about Hamada is the pitchers are basically made of paper. Like you can squish them around, the lowers as well, no real firmness to them, uh, but, but you know, they make up for that with incredible, incredible morphology. Down here you maybe already saw as I was panning by, this is Nepenthes loei. This uh, could almost be said to be the exact opposite of Nepenthes hamata. No peristome to speak of. Um, no long shape. This is an upper pitcher. Uh, the lower pitchers, I actually don't have any going on right now, are totally different. But uh, these look obviously like a toilet bowl. They have this little hole down here. They have hairs on the overturned lid right here that you can definitely see. And this white material is a sugary excretion called exudiate. And it was kind of mysterious for a while what these were for until just recently it was observed that little tree shrews perch right here and they lick the exudiate off of the, the underside of the lid right here and their butt lines right over this hole and they poop inside of it and that's how these plants eat. And the little shrews are very territorial of their plants because the plants feed them and I'm sure the plants are pretty ter territorial of the tree shrews. Uh, also, unlike the Hamada, this is rock hard. I'm squeezing it really hard right now, and it's like wood. It's pretty amazing. Panning over here, we have Nepenthes aristolochioides. This is, again, an extremely extreme plant. Uh, nothing else looks like it. Unlike every other Nepenthes, basically, uh, the pitcher opens to the side rather than through the top. And tiny little opening completely weird looking. It looks almost like an engorged tick. Uh, this is a very endangered plant uh, that uh, is is located at very high altitude. Really, really cool plant. And then up here is Nepenthes alata. Now, Nepenthes alata itself is not super interesting, but this is a variegated Nepenthes alata. It's one of the only stable variegated plants. Uh, it's a single clone that was uh, was created in culture, so it was it was a house-made plant, not taken from the wild, and uh, has kind of made its way through people's collections. And a lot of variegated Nepenthes have variegated leaves like this one, but then the pitchers are relatively normal. This variegation persists down through the pitchers. Uh, we really love this plant. It does really great in a variety of conditions. Uh, we sell it occasionally on eBay, sometimes on the website. You can see actually up here, the, the lower pitchers have very nice 
kind of red blush peristomes. Really, really cool plant. Uh, Nepenthes alata, not so great in general, but variegated Nepenthes alata we're really excited about. So that's a quick little tour of some of these really neat and unique Nepenthes species. Some of the easiest stuff to identify, some of the most desired plants, and some of the best hybridizers in the genus because their genes tend to be so strong and uh, they pass them on even in rather complex hybrids. So I hope you enjoyed this. Check out more videos uh, here on our YouTube page. Uh, our site is at predatoryplants.com. And again, in the comments, feel free to suggest any videos you'd like to see or any questions you have about any of this. Thanks a lot.